Hi, uh, welcome to the introduction part of the course Mastering Search Engine Optimization, or SEO. My name is Farhad Eftekori and I'm the teacher of this course. Here are course links uh, where you can find the material of this course. And here are also some typographical conventions that we use uh, throughout the course. Make sure to get familiar with them. You're going to encounter them at the bottom of the slides and each of them means something, so get familiar with them. And here is also a difficulty level indicator. Uh, the slide of this uh, course has been divided into three difficulty level, easy, moderate and hard. It's up to the students uh, how deep they want to gain their knowledge. And here are slides framework. Uh, we have title here, difficulty level indicator going to be here, slide number. And also in this code, if you enter the code in here to this URL instead of this code uh, here, then you will be directed to the exact part of the tutorial videos for that certain slide. In the center, we're going to have content, and then we have this course name, section name, and these conventions of our icons. Here are the content of this uh, introduction part of the uh, course. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Internet, Internet Archive then, uh, Internet before Google, introduction to search engines, and how do search engines work, Internet marketing, search engine marketing, what is search engine optimization, the importance of SEO skills uh, for a web developer, the importance of SEO skills for a business administrator, because uh, we, have, we may have some students coming from IT side, some students from business side, so it's nice for them to know how they can use these skills. And why does uh, my website need SEO? And we're going to talk about white hack, uh, what hat and black hat techniques. And finally, here in this part of the course, we're going to talk about the impact of usability and user experience on SEO. Our approach in this course, first we're going to talk about the logic behind SEO and then we're going to be introduced to SEO and applying some tips and finally talk about some related topics and uh, get to know about Google Analytics and how to use that. So by definition, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So now let's talk about uh, the concept of search engine optimization for a minute before we start uh, about the related topics that I found out is going to be beneficial for you to learn and get to know about. Uh, imagine we buy the most expensive uh, fishing net or fishing pole and uh, just because we bought that we put it in our drawer or closet somewhere and we ex uh, expect to like have fish, like we expect them to be like so many fish uh, out coming from this uh, tools and devices that we bought. So we cannot just because of having this thing expect uh, the fish to ring our doorbell and just come all the way from the ocean and just be our pet or our food. So this concept is exactly related to creating a super beautifully designed and uh, like functional website. And just because we create that, we expect the visitors come all the way from everywhere in the world on the internet uh, to visit our website. So we really need to somehow find a way to bring them to our website as a visitor or something. Just like the fishes uh, in the ocean or a sea or lake. And we have to go and take our super fancy fishing tool in order to capture and catch some fish. So this is the whole concept of search engine optimization to uh, bring visitors and users and customers uh, to our website, products, or whatever we are offering. Well, thanks to the internet, now uh, we can create our websites and web pages, and because of that, we can apply this search engine optimization the concept uh, for our website. So I thought it's going to be nice for you to also get familiar with the history of internet, that how it began, or what are the 
uh, special milestone and uh, events that were important for us to get to know about. So this part is just for fun to learn and you're not gonna expect them in your assignments or uh, quiz or projects. All the, the slides with this icon, it means that they are fun to learn. Well, all the materials are fun to learn, but this is not, not gonna be in uh, any other assessment uh, criteria or parts. I'm not gonna talk about them, you can also read them and get to know them. You will probably hear some keywords such as ARPANET and uh, this project somewhere before or like some protocols like TCP IP. It's also nice to know where they coming from or what year it was and what was the project that they started to work on them, especially the people, some countries. Uh, it's a good knowledge to have them just for fun or for whatever that you're looking for. And the source of information is coming from this Internet Society uh, organization. Uh, it's a question from you, uh, so if you are working with your pair, you can also discuss together. So do you think it is possible to view a website or a web page from earlier time? For instance, you would like to see uh, how Yahoo or Google or Microsoft, uh, their website were look alike in the year 2000 or like 2002 or in some uh, exact date. Do you think it's possible? And the answer could be, yeah, it can. And uh, we have this Internet Archive uh, organization. It's a San Francisco nonprofit digital library uh, that, as I wrote here, the stated mission is a universal access to all knowledge. And they provide free public access to collection of digitalized materials, such as websites, software applications, games, music, movies, videos, uh, moving images and they got founded in 1996 and here is their website uh, archive.org or org uh, for instance as an example here you can see on your left side uh, this is microsoft homepage back in uh 12th of december 1998 pretty simple so maybe that that time was like very advanced and like good looking uh, and here you can also see the six of uh i guess October 2005, this is Microsoft homepage. So after seven years, a little bit done seven years, it got a little bit more advanced, as you can see. And uh, it's a very nice function and feature to use for you to also understand uh, how this, uh, like how design got more complete and like uh, the way that nowadays are, uh, especially if you're not like from those days working with internet or something it's it's quite nice to get to know about that and sometimes also you're looking for exact material on some specific date from a website or somewhere so it's nice to know that you can uh, get this information somewhere from internet so now you can also try it by yourself to go to this, uh, this uh, archive.org website and to see uh, what how your uh, favorite websites will look like, like some earlier time. And now let's talk about a little bit about internet before Google. So it all started in 1990 with this Archie uh, website, some project in a student of uh, from a student of uh, McGill University in Montreal, and then. We started to use uh, in 90s uh, file transfer protocols, which was also a great advanced uh, feature to get introduced to and used to. And then 1994, Excite uh, came on internet and they uh, created a directory of collection of like websites and services, which was also quite beneficial. And then 
1994 Yahoo directory has been introduced and then we have Lycos in 1994 again so 1994 was quite uh, popular among search engines and then Alta Vista then uh, brought many important features to webs uh, as well so here was the category of internet before Google and uh, this concept of search engines that got introduced And then in 1996, we had Google search engine. So as you can see here, Larry and Sergey began working on Backroup, a search engine which utilized backlinks for search. And it used to rank pages using uh, citation notation, meaning any uh, mention of a website on another site would count it as a vote toward the mentioned site. So it was some kind of system that the algorithm that they were like uh, introducing and uh, creating uh, in order to get uh, the most popular websites and then after that this Google website has been uh, the most popular search engine as well. Yeah and also you can talk with your pair to see what is the, the primary search engine that you use and what are the services and uh, features that you're using from the search engine. Uh, as you may know, search engines are not, uh, the feature of search engines are not uh, just this providing searches on the internet. There are so many other features that search engines, especially the top ones like Google, uh, Bing, and Yahoo uh, introduce and uh, have for their visitors to use. So modern search engines are pretty incredible. Complex algorithms uh, enable search engines uh, to take your search query and return results that are usually quite accurate, presenting you with valuable information nuggets among a vast uh, information data mine. Search engines have come a long way since their early prototypes from improvements in web crawlers and categorizing and indexing the web to introducing new protocols such as robots.txt so that webmasters have control what web pages get crawled. The development of search engines has been the uh, culmination of multiple search technologies that develop from different search engines. So it's a quite advanced topic, uh, interesting field for you to also get to know more about how you can create a search engine, how you can crawl through the, uh, out the web to see. And uh, we're gonna get introduced to all the concepts of uh, uh, having this more uh, better ranking in search engines uh, result as well. So that's the whole concept of this course. And this is also the market share for search engines. As you may see here, Google has a bigger part of the cake. But it doesn't mean that it's not important to get to know about the other search engine features and uh, having our website uh, to have a higher rank in other search engines as well. All right, now let's see how do search engine works. So I would like you to think with yourself or if you have a pair, discuss with your pair and finally search online to find out how search engine works. Uh, I'm not gonna like be silent. You can pause this video whenever you want. So uh, just to make sure this is not gonna be a long and boring tutorial video, I will start right away after I ask you some, to do something. So it's up to you to start it and pause it and start it whenever you want to. So there are some uh, steps that search engine uh, do their magic. First of all, it's crawling. The other one is indexing. And the last one is ranking and retrieval. Uh, it's pretty obvious from the name that what they're doing, but we're going to go and cover uh, each step to make sure we understand them. So crawling involves scanning the site and getting a complete list of everything on there. The page titles, images, keywords it contains, and any other pages it links to. Uh, how is the website crawl exactly? An automated bot, a spider. Visits each page, uh, each page uh, just like you and I would, only very quickly, even in the earliest days, Google reported that they were reading a few hundred pages a second, which is a quite a lot number. But now, thanks to this uh, hardware specification and uh, like most, much more uh, super beneficial programming algorithm, it must be like much, much 
more than that. So the crawler then adds all the new links it found to a list of places to crawl next, in addition to recrawling sites again to see if anything has changed or not. It's a never-ending process. So all the time these crawlers or uh, bots are digging their way out through internet and just crawl to all the websites and all the links. The second step is indexing. So after they crawl, they have to index some information. Indexing is the process of taking all that, all of that data you have uh, from a crawl and placing it in a big database. All of this data is stored in vast data centers with thousands of petabytes worth of drivers. I never heard this petabytes worth before. So it means like it's very, very huge. And this is the uh, image coming from one of Google's data centers. And finally, we have this uh, step of ranking and retrieval. The last step is what you see. You type in a search query and the search engine attempts to display the most relevant documents it finds that match your query. This is the most complicated step, but also the most relevant to you or I. As a web developers and users, uh, well, it is also the area in which search engines different, uh, differentiate themselves among each other. To make sure that we're going to talk about and cover all the related material also to search engine optimization, uh, here in this introduction part, I'm going to also talk about this internet marketing concept. Uh, here you can see there's a very nice description about internet marketing that you can go through and learn about that. It's a beneficial information for you to have. Sometimes you would also like to uh, use this internet marketing in order to get the best out of uh, this concept in order to uh, bring more visitors and users and consumers for your websites, products, or whatever you're developing and creating. Yeah, you can also try to see what are the different types of internet marketing. And here in this slide, we can see we have social media marketing, email marketing, referral marketing, content marketing, native advertising, and search engine marketing. So let's go individually and um, one by one analyze them. So here this uh, description of social media marketing, which you can get more information from. And also here you can see that all of these uh, popular, most of the popular search, uh, social medias and social networks uh, where you can find out more and uh, the way that you can uh, introduce your website or product to them. Each of them usually have some kind of services and uh, features for you to, uh, as a paid uh, subscription or service, you can uh, advertise or uh, somehow find your proper uh, visitors, uh, show your advertisement in social media, usually based on their age, based on their gender, based on their location whatever is important for you so that's where their database of users come handy and uh, beneficial for you to use and also we have concept of email marketing which is also beneficial and uh, it's a very nice and uh, beneficial method for you to find your customers by sending them emails and using this email marketing And there are so many websites that provide you these services uh, for you based on the number of uh, people that they send their email and some features of uh, specification of the emails that you want to send them. And also in internet marketing, we have the concept of referral marketing, which probably you use that before or not. Uh, it's usually uh, is when you uh, try to find customers uh, based on the customer that you already have. So encouraging them to uh, somehow bring along their friends, uh, the other people that they know and they think your products and your services are going to be beneficial for them as well. So by that you also can give them some free products, services or some credit uh, to use in your 
uh, applications or services somewhere. And here's also a nice uh, overview of the product marketing program that you can get more information from. So as you can see here, you have to create a compelling offer, make them motivated to uh, somehow uh, spend time and their like energy on that in order to bring more clients, make them motivated in order to do that. And then you have to promote that program for your visitors and using all of these social networks and, and other media that we already talked about in order to uh, make them to use this uh, concept. And then finally, we can monitor and optimize uh, this offer as well. So we're not going to go uh, through all the details, but at least it's nice to get to know more about. And if you're in more interested, then there are tons of uh, information available online for you to get to know more. And then we have the co concept of content marketing, which is also a very beneficial uh, concept in internet marketing. And here is also a nice uh, figure for content marketing. And then we have this old style native advertising, which is a still uh, on the internet for us to use in many websites, many uh, platforms that uh, they have visitors. You can also find your potential visitors by advertising in those uh, services and websites as well. Also, we can talk about if you're favoriting that is it also really beneficial for you to see an advertisement on the website. Sometimes they can get like boring or uh, somehow make you not really want to like click on them or use them or something because when you are visiting some websites, you are not visiting for advertisement, you're visiting for the uh, exact content that they are providing. But it's somehow a two side uh, argue that if it's really beneficial or not. But nowadays, after this uh, introduction of social medias, uh, it's not like the old days that it was one of the major ways of advertising. But now there are other uh, ways, as we uh, talked about in internet marketing. So that's why I like you to get to know about the other concept as well. If you want to advertise something, then there are different ways to do that as well. And you can also try different campaigns in order to uh, analyze that, starting by a little uh, like credit and then see which one is more effective for you and your business or product. Now, one of the topics in internet marketing, which is search engine marketing, is more related to the topic of our course. Search engine marketing, or SEM, is a form of internet marketing that involves the promotion of websites for increasing their visibility in search engine result pages, or SERPs. Primarily through paid advertising, SEM may incorporate search engine optimization, which adjust or rewrite website content and site architecture to achieve a higher ranking in search engine results pages to enhance pay-per-click listings. And we have uh, different parts, inner parts of search engine marketing. We have pay-per-click, uh, cost per impression, search analytics, web analytics, and search engine optimization. Uh, I would like you to think for yourself or discuss with your pair about the difference between uh, pay per click or cost per impression. Do you have any clues that what do they mean and uh, what are the difference among them, between them? All right. Uh, pay per click or PPC, also called uh, cost per click, is really obvious by its name. It's an internet advertising model used to direct traffic to websites in which advertisers pay the publisher, typically a website owner, when the ad is clicked. It is defined simply as the amount spent to get an advertising click. 
Uh, with search engine advertisers typically bid on keyword phrases relevant to their target market. Uh, content sites commonly charge a fixed price per click rather than a uh, user binding system. PPC uh, display advertisements, also known as banner ads, are shown on websites or search engine results the related content that have agreed to show ads. Yeah, here also, uh, as you also definitely see in search engine results, uh, there are some results here as a sponsor leaks. Uh, they're usually that pay per click advertisement method. And here is also a nice description uh, figure for this pay per uh, pay per clip uh, process or PPC. And then we have this cost per impression uh, concept. Cost per impression or CPI. Uh, is a term used in traditional advertising media selection as well as online advertising and marketing related to web traffic. It refers to the cost of traditional advertising or internet marketing or email advertising campaigns where advertisers pay each time an ad is displayed. CPI is the cost per imp uh, expense inc uh, incurred for each potential customer who views the uh, advertisement. While CPM refers to the cost or expense in uh, cured for every thousand potential customers who view the advertisement. So it's not like uh, I would like to have this advertise to be shown to one. Usually it, it's uh, the system and uh, the format is for every thousand potential customers or views. So that's the difference between pay-per-clip and uh, cost per impression. Pay-per-clip has been uh, set based on the clicks so it doesn't matter to how many visitors they show them. But cost per impression doesn't care about the number of clicks. It just show to users and visitors and people. And then it's up to them to decide if it's interesting enough for them to click on them and get to know or not. So definitely the price for each click is much more greater than price for each view. Here are also these advertisements may either be pay-per-clip or cost per impression. Depends on the contract that they have and the services they uh, got from the search engines. And then we have this search analytics. Search analytics is the analysis and aggregation of search engine statistics for use in search engine marketing or SEM. And search engine optimization, uh, which is SEO, in other words, search analytics helps website owners understand and improve their performance on search engines. Search analytics includes search volume trends and analysis, reverse searching, entering websites to see their keywords, keyword monitoring, search result, and advertisement history. Advertisement spending statistic, website compression, affiliate marketing statistic, uh, multivariate ad testing, and the other concepts. Here is also a uh, screenshot coming from Google Analytics, Analytics uh, in advance for at the end. We're going to fully be introduced to Google Analytics and the search analytics, and then how we can have them on our website and uh, get the best out of the information coming from this service, which is very beneficial and uh, great to use if we want to analyze the search uh, status and if we have different campaigns for bring more visitors and users to our product and websites. And then we have web analytics. And, uh, web analytics is the measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of web data for purposes of understanding and optimizing web usage. Web analytics is not just a tool for measuring web traffic, but can be used as a tool for business and market research and to assess and improve the effectiveness of a website. Web analytics application can also help companies measure the results of traditional print or broadcast advertising campaigns. It helps one to estimate how traffic to a website changes after the launch of a new advertising campaign. Web analytics provides information about the number of visitors to a website and the number of page views. It helps uh, gauge traffic and popularity trends, which is useful for market research. Yeah, I would like to discuss it with your pair or for yourself that how this information can be beneficial for us. If you want to have a campaign, advertising campaign, how we can get the best out of 
the information that we are getting from web analytics. Here's also a screenshot coming from Yahoo Web Analytics that you can see here. Based on the different categories, there are some information getting from them. Usually, uh, for applying them on our websites, we need to place some specific code, HTML code that they give us uh, to put in our uh, HTML part of the web page, all of them, or one single page based on our need. And then, uh, after visitors come to our website, uh, that part of the code gets uh, uh, like communicate to uh, Yahoo or Google or whatever service that we are using uh, servers and then some information gonna be sent from our users to the servers of those services. Uh, later we will fully talk about these systems in advanced section. Now let's see what is search engine optimization or SEO. SEO is a marketing discipline focused on growing visibility in organic or non-paid search engine results. SEO encompasses uh, both the technical and creative elements required to improve rankings, drive traffic and increase awareness in search engines. There are uh, many aspects to SEO from the words on your page to the way other sites link to you on this web. Sometimes SEO is simply a matter of making sure your site is structured in a way that search engines understand. So now that we got familiar with the way that we can like pay some amount of credit or money in order to uh, make our websites visible to the visitors and like uh, the people who search on uh, Google or other search engines, but SEO is some uh, concept to apply on our website uh, to make sure that Based on those ranking parts, as we can remember, there were like three phases uh, that the, the search engines get to know about the websites, crawling, indexing, and then ranking and retrieval. So when they go through the websites, if we apply this search engine optimization concept, they can crawl better, and then they will have a much better index and then uh, ranking for our websites, if we apply them very efficiently and in a smart way, which is not a very uh, strange magic to do because there are some uh, rules that we have to follow just to make sure that we are getting a better ranking. There's nothing certain, definitely, but uh, that is the best that we can do. And then you will see the result uh, after applying them after a while to see, okay, now our ranked ranking is much, much better in search engine. So it's nice to know about them and nice to apply them. And that was the whole purpose of you enrolling in this course, of course. <laughs> so let's see what uh, search engines are looking for. Search engines want to do their job as best as possible uh, by referring users uh, to websites and content that is most relevant to what the user is looking for. So how is relevancy determined? Well, first is based off the content, of course. Uh, content is determined by the theme that is being given, the text on the page, and the titles and descriptions that are given. And then performance of a website, how fast is your site, uh, and does it work properly? And then the authority, does your site have good enough content to link to, or do other uh, authoritative sites use your website as a reference or site? the information that's available, and user experience, of course, and how does the site look? Is it easy to navigate around? Does it look safe? Does it have a uh, high bounce rate? And then now let's talk a little bit about the importance of SEO skills for a web developer. Well, it's a must-have knowledge, especially if you're working in a front-end uh, area and uh, part, and you're a front-end developer, because you have to efficiently create your uh, elements or whatever uh, stuff that you're creating on the front end part. So if you know about search engine optimization, then uh, your output and the product that you are developing is uh, applying in this concept as well. And it's a very beneficial skill to have for job interviews because well, definitely when they are hiring front end developer, they expect their website to have a nicer ranking on search engines to bring more visitors and consumers. And then it improve, improve your designing logic as well. 
by knowing about the concept of search engine optimization. Uh, I'm quite sure that if you think about it, you can also think about other benefits as well. And also the importance of SEO skill for business administrator. Uh, well, after knowing them, you can also bring more users. It's a very beneficial skill to have for your job interviews, of course, and it's quite important. And it includes revenue and impact of the project, uh, website, product, or whatever that you are creating. And make it much easier to work in web developing projects, because, the, because then you can understand like these concepts and uh, you can get to know each other a little bit better. And then more realistic marketing plans and campaigns coming from knowing about these concepts. And definitely there are other more benefits, but you can also think about that. So now we almost know that why does our website need SEO, but let's talk about a little bit more. Well, SEO is not a cost, but an investment, you know, because it's not like a web hosting that you have to have in order to host our files or get a domain name. Uh, it's some kind of an investment, like we are not really required to do that. It's not necessarily if you want to have a website uh, online, but for an investment, it's a nice thing to do if you want to uh, bring more users and consumers. In every possible website and product, it can also be applicable. For instance, this course that you're having, if you are advertising them on social media or uh, search engines, then definitely more students gonna come and participate in these courses. So in every single possible business or product, you can also uh, get the benefits from them. And SEO is a crucial part of your marketing mix. Well, that's true. And SEO will increase your sales without uh, proportionately increasing your marketing costs. And SEO is more than just SEO-friendly CMS. SEO can multiply your impact. SEO keeps you from missing out on free advertising. Yeah, that's for sure. Because uh, when you apply them, it's not like buying and then more uh, users and visitors gonna see your links and then most probably they can also click on them and then uh, be driven to your website or web page. And SEO increases social sharing, definitely. When people see that, they can also share it and then their friends gonna see it and then you're, they're like a huge network uh, seeing your material and content and get to know about them. Even if they don't click it, you know, it's just like, they see it often, they see like your friends are like sharing something and uh, they get to know more about your brand or products or the image of them and that's really nice as well. And SEO will help people find your website, well, definitely. And SEO builds trust and credibility, as I mentioned about the brand name and project and the other stuff. And SEO is a measurable marketing plan, of course. Then you can see from where your visitors are coming from if you're using this analytics and that's a quite uh, important uh, and beneficial thing to benefit from. And your competitors are doing it. So if you don't do that, then you're way behind them. And then we have the concept of white hat and black hat techniques. SEO techniques can be classified into two broad categories. Techniques that search engine recommend as part of a good design and those techniques of which search engine do not approve. The search engines attempt to minimize the effect of the latter. So white uh, hat techniques are being endorsed. And if search engines uh, notice that you're using some black hat, uh, black hat uh, techniques, then definitely it's going to uh, reduce your ranking. All right, now let's talk about white hat techniques. Uh, SEO technique is considered white hat if it conforms to the search engine guidelines and involves no uh, deception. As the search engine guidelines are not written as a series of rules or uh, commandments, this is an important uh, distinction to note. White hat SEO is not just about following guidelines, but is about ensuring that the content of uh, the content of search engine indexes and subsequently rank is the same content a user will see. White hat advice is generally summed up as creating content for users, not for search engine. 
and then making that content easily accessible to the spiders uh, rather than attempting to trick the algorithm from its intended purpose. White Hat SEO is in many ways similar to web development that promotes accessibility, although uh, the two are not identical. Well, briefly, White Hat techniques are in a way that the search engine makes sure that all of those contents are for you, that, that, that you created them for your own users, not to trick search engines, not to provide fake links, uh, copy paste content material from somewhere else uh, to boost up your uh, search engine ranking. So that's the whole thing about that. And throughout time, it gets updated, they change something. Uh, that's why you also have to make yourself updated to this concept of search engine optimization. Uh, there were some ways that they saw that people and developers are misusing. Uh, so throughout time they change it and uh, they make sure that uh, the results going to be much closer to the result that actually users are looking for. And also let's talk about a little bit about black hat techniques. Uh, that's almost we have some clues about them now that we got introduced to white hat uh, techniques. Black Hat uh, SEO attempts to improve ranking in ways that are disapproved of by the search engines or involve deception. Uh, one Black Hat technique uses text that is hidden, either as text colored similar to the background in an invisible div uh, or uh, positioned off a screen. Another method gives a different page depending on whether the page is being uh, requested by a human visitor or a search engine. A technique known as clocking. So, if you somehow create two uh, different content for users and then search engine as spiders and bots, then it's definitely a black hat technique. Or if you put your text in uh, like somewhere hidden, not to show to users, but for uh, crawlers to crawl, then it's also uh, considered as a black hat technique. Another category sometimes uses, uh, used is uh, gray hat SEO. This is in between black hat and white hat uh, approaches where the methods employed avoid the site being penalized, however, do not act in producing the best content for users, rather uh, entirely focus on improving search engine ranking. So search engine optimization is in a way that we somehow also benefit our users and visitors from the content and look of our website. And then search engines nowadays are much more smarter than they used to be. So if we focus on creating uh, well good content and nice user experience and uh, user interface, then definitely also uh, improving our ranking in search engine of uh, search engines as well. And now let's talk a little bit about the impact of usability and user experience on search engine optimization. Well, uh, the characteristic of a website which has a good search engine optimization is, first of all, it has to be easy to use, uh, easy to navigate and understand, uh, provide direct, actionable information relevant to the query, and professionally designed and accessible to modern browsers. And finally, deliver high quality, legit, uh, legitimate and credible content. So UI and UX provide an uh, indirect but measurable benefits to a site's external popularity, which the engines can then interpret as a signal of a higher quality. This is called the no one likes to link to a crummy site phenomenon. Crafting a thoughtful, uh, empathic user experience helps ensure that visitors to your site perceive it positively, encouraging sharing, bookmarking, return visits, and inbound links, all signals that trick down to search engines and contribute to high rankings. And finally, here are some links uh, for further study if you want to learn, uh, learn more about how the search engine works. There's a, a YouTube video about that on how to build a basic web crawler to pull information from a website. Also, you can uh, use this link to get more information about it. So that was it, the first uh, part of our course, introduction part, where we almost got familiar with many, many other uh, relevant topics uh, close to search engine optimization. Uh, 
I hope you enjoy this part of the material and thank you for your consideration. I hope you have a wonderful class. See you on the other part, which is intermediate part.